Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Roseanne is back with major revenge and more than one new show for big return to TV. It appears that Roseanne Barr's exile from primetime television will be short-lived. Roseanne burst back onto primetime television to wildly successful ratings of her sitcom reboot and season two was already in pre-production stages only to be fired by ABC in one of the biggest hypocritical double standard moves of the year. Within a mere 24 hours, Roseanne lost her show and proceeded to be the object of a hysterical snowflake storm of blizzard-like proportions after a tweet sent in May was perceived as racist. Her since-deleted tweet purported that former senior advisor to former President Barack Obama, Valerie Jarrett was a product of the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes, Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby equals VJ. In a maddening bout of self-righteous virtue signaling, the interwebs exploded with indignation that Jarrett could possibly be compared to an ape or even the mere suggestion of ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. Roseanne apologized for her tweet the very same day along with the cast of her since-canceled ABC reboot, Roseanne. ABC now plans to launch a Roseanne reboot sans Roseanne which many have vowed to boycott due to their outrage over how the entire debacle was handled by ABC. Yet perhaps it worked out for the best as Roseanne as the former sitcom star says she is now looking over new offers to return to TV with a lot of excitement. She spoke with her friend Rabbi Shmuley Bodich in a new podcast about how she is already considering a new offer to come back to TV. Inside every bad thing is a good thing waiting to happen and I feel very excited because I've already been offered so many things and I almost already accepted one really good offer to go back on TV and I might do it, she said. But we'll see. Barr spoke to Bodich on Wednesday, but the podcast, the second she has recorded with the rabbi since the show was cancelled, was released on Saturday night. In her first interview with Bodich right after ABC cancelled the show, she expressed how upsetting the whole thing has been breaking down in tears while saying how she regretted all that happened. I lost everything and I regretted it before I lost everything, Roseanne tearfully stated. It's really hard to say this but, I didn't mean what they think I meant. And that's what's so painful. But I have to face that it hurt people. It is great to see Roseanne the land on her feet after such an amazing bout of Hollywood hypocrisy. Roseanne was given a trial by Twitter for the crime of racism and found guilty. They went crazy over Roseanne comparing someone to an ape yet saw nothing wrong with actor Peter Fonda calling on a mob to kidnap and rape a 12-year-old boy in violence against women. Then again, it seems this behavior is so commonplace in Hollywood that perhaps it is not as surprising as it should be. As long as one supports the leftist agenda, it seems you can call for violence against women and children, make death threats, and generally speak and do as you please with impunity. Yet if one has even the appearance of leaning to the right politically, conservative, Christian, Republican, or any of the labels deemed less than politically correct, you must be destroyed and made an example of at all costs. Meanwhile, Roseanne herself claims she did not know Jarrett was black. That is definitely a reasonable explanation, especially when one considered that Jarrett is biracial claiming both African and European ancestry. She also claims race had nothing to do with the joke and found it very strange that she would just all of a sudden become racist after decades in the public eye without a problem. It also seems interesting that if one does even the smallest bit of research one can find that Jared has ties that are suspect at best, making Roseanne's tweet not a joke at all, but perhaps a little too close to the truth for Jared's comfort? In an article from 2015, while Jared still played an active role in the White House, conservative watchdog group Judicial Watch uncovered some highly interesting information concerning the nature of Jared's associations. Judicial Watch states, Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. Files obtained by Judicial Watch reveal that the dad, maternal grandpa and father-in-law of President Obama's trusted senior advisor, Valerie Jarrett, were hardcore communists under investigation by the U.S. government. Jarrett's dad, pathologist and geneticist Dr. James Bowman, had extensive ties to communist associations and individuals, his lengthy FBI file shows. In 1950 Bowman was in communication with a paid Soviet agent named Alfred Stern, who fled to Prague after getting charged with espionage. Bowman was also a member of a communist sympathizing group called the Association of Interns and Medical Students. After his discharge from the Army Medical Corps in 1955, Bowman moved to Iran to work, the FBI records show. According to Bowman's government file the Association of Interns and Medical Students is an organization that has long been a faithful follower of the Communist Party line and engages in un-American activities. Bowman was born in Washington, D.C., and had deep ties to Chicago, where he often collaborated with fellow communists. J.W. also obtained documents on Bowman from the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, 
OPM, showing that the FBI was brought in to investigate him for his membership in a group that follows the Communist Party line. The Jarrett family communist ties also include a business partnership between Jarrett's maternal grandpa, Robert Rashawn Taylor, and Stern, the Soviet agent associated with her dad. Jarrett's father-in-law, Vernon Jarrett, was also another big-time Chicago communist, according to separate FBI files obtained by JW as part of a probe into the Jarrett family's communist ties. For a period of time Vernon Jarrett appeared on the FBI's security index and was considered a potential communist saboteur who was to be arrested in the event of a conflict with the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics USSR. His FBI file reveals that he was assigned to write propaganda for a Communist Party front group in Chicago that would disseminate the Communist Party line among the middle class. It's been well documented that Valerie Jarrett, a Chicago lawyer and longtime Obama confidant, is a liberal extremist who wields tremendous power in the White House. Faithful to her roots, she still has connections to many communist and extremist groups, including the Muslim Brotherhood. Jared and her family also had strong ties to Frank Marshall Davis, a big Obama mentor and Communist Party member with an extensive FBI file. JW has exposed Valerie Jarrett's many transgressions over the years, including her role in covering up a scandalous gun-running operation carried out by the Department of Justice DOJ. Last fall JW obtained public records that show Jarrett was a key player in the effort to cover up that Attorney General Eric Holder lied to Congress about the Fast and Furious, a disastrous experiment in which the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco Firearms and Explosives ATF, allowed GS from the U.S. to be smuggled into Mexico so they could eventually be traced to drug cartels. Instead, federal law enforcement officers lost track of hundreds of weapons which have been used in an unknown number of crimes, including the murder of a U.S. Border Patrol agent in Arizona. In 2008 JW got documents linking Valerie Jarrett, who also served as co-chairman of Obama's presidential transition team, to a series of real estate scandals including several housing projects operated by convicted felon and Obama fundraiser slash friend Antoine Tony Resco. According to the documents obtained from the Illinois Secretary of State, Valerie Jarrett served as a board member for several organizations that provided funding and support for Chicago slum projects operated by Resco. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.